Hey Rose, it's Monday. It should come as no surprise, but we are quite fond of science here, and just like I enjoy collaborations between artists, I also enjoy collaborations between scientific fields as well. For instance, I'm an anthropologist, I study humans and their social and cultural identities and their interactions between each other, however, I'm also extremely fascinated by chemistry. These two fields might not seem related at all, but it turns out they're much more closely linked than you might think. See, our bodies are basically just bloody sacks of organs that provide the perfect laboratory conditions for certain chemical reactions to take place. Rapidly and consistently in every single cell of your entire body at all times from before you were born until when you die, chemical reactions are happening. These reactions are taking molecules and converting them into energy, or they're storing energy, or they're turning that energy back into something that you can use. These reactions send signals throughout all cells in your body, or they create enzymes that can actually go to other parts of your body and do even more chemistry. But what does this have to do with human culture and social interactions? Well, actually, everything. Remember how I said that everything in our bodies was chemistry? Well, that includes our emotions, our behavior, our moods, and how we perceive and experience the world around us. There is a recent case study that shows this just beautifully. For most of human history, we were hunter-gatherers, so in order to determine how our current hormone setup came to be, some scientists decided to study a hunter-gatherer population, the Tsimane people of the Amazon. You've probably heard before of the hormone test testosterone. It's a male sex hormone that plays just many, many roles in our bodies, but can affect behavior by causing competitiveness, alertness, uh, the feeling of power or being in charge, basically anything that we think of as being manly. It was found that when a Tsimane man goes out for a hunt, his testosterone levels go up while hunting and spike when he makes a kill. As with most mammals, this rush of testosterone acts to reward the brain and the body for acquiring food, therefore urging the hunter to want to hunt again in the future. But then they found something in the Tsimane man that separates humans from most other mammals. See, there's another hormone called oxytocin, my favorite hormone. It plays many different social roles, but is often called the love hormone. It's what creates that feeling of trust and bondedness. It's what floods your body right after you have sex, or when you spend time with someone that you really care about. Hey. The hormone is found in all mammals, but it originated from the mother-child bond, driving mammalian mothers to want to care for and love their offspring. Because of this, the hormone is usually just found in the females of a species and not typically the males. So it was expected to find that these hunters would experience a surge of testosterone right after completing a kill, but what surprised scientists was to find that these men also experienced a surge in oxytocin. These levels of oxytocin would continue to rise from the point of the kill all the way until the men got home. Now, to be clear, we've known that men have the oxytocin hormone as well as women. However, it seemed weird that we would produce it right after killing an animal. <laughs> I'm just so full of love about killing right now. I'm just in love with killing. Most mammalian males don't form families. The females raise their children and the males just impregnate the females and then protect them with muscles while the females raise their babies. This fits into a males have testosterone, females have oxytocin model. However, in humans, this isn't what we observe. When human men started forming monogamous relationships and actually taking part in raising their own children, it became beneficial for men to have that bonding feeling as well. So, when these hunters are returning home from a kill, their bodies are literally surging with a chemical that makes them feel pleasure and pride and love, knowing that they can go home and provide food to their families. There's literally chemical evidence that shows that these men are absolutely elated to be able to provide for their loved ones. For me, there is overwhelming beauty in this, since long-term relationships are beneficial for the raising of human children, evolution basically helped us out by giving men the ability to feel that same love and closeness and bond that a female of a given mammalian species would typically feel. And damn, I love science! And Rose, the woman who constantly floods my body with oxytocin, 
whether or not I bring home a dead animal. We will see you on Wednesday.